For hundreds of thousands of years, the Neanderthals, our closest extinct human relatives, thrived across the harsh landscapes of Europe and the Middle East. Their archaeological trail reveals ingenious people, masters of crafting complex stone tools to survive the Ice Age. But then they vanished, their story fading into ancient mystery. Today, we're unraveling new clues about this enigmatic branch of our family tree. Fossil discoveries and cutting-edge science are rewriting everything we thought we knew about the Neanderthals. Who were they? What capabilities lurked within those sloping skulls? And what led to their abrupt demise? Join us as we dive headfirst into the fascinating world of the Neanderthals. But first, mash that like button and hit subscribe. Unless you want to risk waking up with this hairy centipede crawling across your face, Neanderthals belong to our genus Homo, which first emerged in Africa around 3 million years ago and descended from the upright-walking Australopithecines of Eastern and Southern Africa. Australopithecines made the earliest known stone tools 3.3 million years ago at the site of Lokalale 3. Intentionally shaped stones with sharp edges likely used for butchering scavenged animal remains, but possibly also for woodworking or defense. While not all Australopithecine species use tools, the Homo lineage diverged from those populations that did make and use stone technology. Neanderthal's story provides insights into human origins and evolution as we explore their biology, behavior, interactions with modern humans, the world they inhabited, their similarities and differences compared to us, and what ultimately drove their extinction. The oldest evidence of our genus Homo comes from a two, eight million year old specimen in Africa. 2.6 million years ago, the first Old Awan stone tools were made consisting of stones with a few flakes removed to create a sharp edge, likely by early Homo. Homo habilis used these Oldowan tools 2.3 million years ago. Homo erectus evolved 2 million years ago and pioneered the more advanced Akulian hand axes by removing many flakes to produce a longer cutting edge. This technology spread with Homo erectus out of Africa into Eurasia. One of the earliest human species to venture into Western Europe was the mysterious Antecessor, who left their fossils behind around 1.2 million years ago before going extinct. But they were just the vanguard. Another wave of ancient humans soon followed in their footsteps. By the middle Pleistocene period around 780,000 years ago, a new lineage of larger-brained Homo heidelbergensis had spread across Europe, armed with more advanced stone tool technologies. These hardy survivors would give rise to multiple new human species adapted to different environments. Around 700,000 years ago, a profound split occurred between the African and Eurasian populations of Homo heidelbergensis. Over hundreds of thousands of years, their lineages diverged along distinct evolutionary paths. By 300,000 to 400,000 years ago, the accumulated differences allowed classification of the African populations as ancestors to our own species, Homo sapiens. Meanwhile, their Eurasian cousins represented the first ancestors to the Neanderthals and mysterious Denisovans. The Denisovans emerged as a distinct human species in Asia, more closely related to Neanderthals than modern humans. They shared a common Neanderthalian ancestor population that trekked from Africa into Eurasia between 470,000 and 380,000 years ago. The first unmistakable Neanderthal traits appeared around 450,000 years ago. 430,000-year-old fossils from Spain already bore clear Neanderthal characteristics inherited from that ancestral Eurasian lineage. As millennia passed, their distinctive features became more exaggerated until the classic heavy-browed Neanderthal morphology recognizable today took full form by around 130,000 years ago. Neanderthals were indeed far different than any modern human alive today, yet the statement doesn't tell the full story because all modern humans actually carry some Neanderthal DNA. The debate continues whether Neanderthals should be considered another species distinct from Homo sapiens or part of our own species. Many paleoanthropologists argue they were a different species, separated from our ancestors for hundreds of thousands of years. But the designation of species is really a scientific construct that doesn't rigidly apply to the reality of biology. This raises another question. Should we consider Neanderthals human well, human is not strictly a taxonomic term for Homo sapiens. Since Neanderthals seem to behave very similar to modern humans, most anthropologists would say they satisfy the requirements of being human. Many would even extend this to include other ancient species like Homo erectus or Homo habilis as human. So what did these ancient human relatives look like up close? Neanderthals had a build and appearance relatively similar to us. One main difference was their shorter, squatter bodies with shorter limbs, 
wider chest, and larger muscles. Based on fossil evidence, the average Neanderthal male stood around 5 5 inches tall and females around 5 2 inches tall. In contrast, later modern humans in Europe averaged 5 9 inches for males and 5 4 inches for females. But Neanderthals were stockier and more heavily built. Weight estimates from 26 specimens show males averaging 171 pounds and females 146 pounds. Their body mass index classified many as overweight by modern standards, though their big bone, dense skeletons, and higher muscle mass contributed to this. One famous 5D2 inches male Neanderthal is estimated to have weighed a robust 190 pounds in his lifetime. While often exaggerated, Neanderthal strength levels were likely achievable for today's elite athletes and weightlifters. Neanderthal's stocky, robust physical build has sparked many hypotheses about its functional advantages. The most common explanation points to an adaptation for glacial conditions. Over their hundreds of thousands of years roaming Europe and the Middle East, Neanderthals experienced at least four separate glacial periods. Surviving the harsh Ice Age winters of Central Europe would have been an immense challenge. With modern-day Europe already quite cold, these glacial periods brought bone-chilling temperatures. A shorter, squatter body built to retain heat may have been key. Simple physics shows less surface area means less heat lost. We see a similar pattern in modern Arctic populations who've evolved shorter limbs and stockier bodies. However, the heat conservation theory hits a snag. Neanderthals in warmer Mediterranean and Middle Eastern regions still maintain their cold-adapted physiques. And during interglacial warm periods in Europe, that squat morphology offered no obvious advantage. So in 2019, anthropologist John Hawkes proposed an alternate hypothesis. Neanderthals were built for sprinting. Their robust muscular bodies may have propelled them in quick bursts to pursue prey. DNA analysis even suggests a higher proportion of fast twitch muscle fibers gave Neanderthals a speed edge over endurance adapted modern humans. Hawkes argued their body proportions, shorter limbs, greater muscle mass, longer heel bones with an elongated Achilles tendon were all adaptations favoring explosive power over distance. While ill-suited for hiking, these sprinting specialists could have outsped their prey in short, rapid chases. Both the hyperarctic and sprinting hypotheses likely capture part of the truth. Undeniably, Neanderthals endured lengthy glacial epochs, their cold-adapted endothermic genes akin to woolly mammoths reflecting that harsh reality. But other morphological evidence, like their throwing optimized arm bones with embedded microfractures, hints that sprinting was also part of their predatory skill set. Piecing together these anatomical clues paints a picture of a squat, cold-resistant human relative, able to both withstand frigid temperatures and pursue prey with explosive power. A fascinating example of how our lineage adapted to drastically different environmental pressures. As we gaze upon the skulls and skeletal remains of Neanderthals, Many unique physical traits catch the eye, hinting at their lineage's distinct evolutionary path. Let's start from the ground up. You might first notice their elongated thumbs with a wider, stronger grip compared to modern humans. Their barrel-chested rib cages were broader too, with straighter ribs, possibly allowing greater lung capacity. But the Neanderthal skull is where the most striking differences emerge. Massive brow ridges jut out, protecting their faces and eyes from potentially heavy blows. Their large eye sockets house pupils bigger than any you've seen, complemented by an occipital bun at the back of the skull. This bony prominence may have accommodated enlarged occipital lobes dedicated to enhanced visual perception. Between their big eyes and expanded visual brain regions, Neanderthals likely excelled at low light vision, a considerable advantage for dawn and dusk hunts. Their large nasal cavities and olfactory bulbs suggest an acute sense of smell too. Though often depicted with large protruding noses, skeletal evidence indicates Neanderthal noses were similar in size to ours, but their nasal sinuses were a third larger, capable of warming incoming air more efficiently, an Arctic adapted trait. In profile view, the lack of a protruding chin is immediately apparent, but this is no aberration. We modern humans are the odd ones out with our chins. Every other human species and primate lacks this purely cosmetic feature. Some theorize our chins emerged through a self-domesticating process of reduced aggression and testosterone levels. While chinless, Neanderthal jaws were quite robust with shoveled incisors and large molars containing expanded pulp cavities. Interestingly, their children's teeth emerged months earlier than ours, allowing solid food consumption at a younger age. 
But perhaps the most striking Neanderthal feature was their elongated globular-shaped skulls, contrasting our rounded cranial form. These distinct brain cases contained formidable gray matter. Male Neanderthals averaged a brain size of 1640 cubic cm, females around 1460 cubic cm, notably larger than modern humans. The largest Neanderthal fossil, Amud 1, sported an immense 1736 cubic cm brain. At face value, their cranial capacities appear vastly larger than our species. However, as we'll explore, raw brain size is just one aspect of overall intelligence. While Neanderthals sported larger cranial capacities than modern humans on average, their brain sizes were actually a bit smaller relative to their robust body sizes. Still, they fell well within the range of living human variation. Brain organization and the proportion of neural tissue devoted to various regions also played a key role. Endocasts reveal Neanderthals had smaller parietal lobes and cerebellums compared to us. Areas linked to creativity, language, muscle memory, and social cognition. However, this doesn't necessarily mean they were universally less adept in those domains. Where Neanderthals seemed to diverge most was in devoting more brain space to visual processing and sensory systems. Their large eye sockets and elongated occipital lobes hint at enhanced low-light vision, a distinct evolutionary advantage for their hunter-gatherer existence. Expanded olfactory bulbs suggest a keen sense of smell, too. In contrast, our species exhibits an almost paradoxical downsizing of visual brain areas for a primate of our size. This seeming trade-off may have freed up neural tissue for modern humans to develop other cognitive capabilities to a higher degree. Another profound difference lies in Neanderthal brain development rates. Their skulls indicate they reach cognitive maturity nearly a decade faster than humans, achieving adult-level brain size by around 15 years old. Just as their brains differed, Neanderthal physical appearances spanned a diverse spectrum across their vast territorial range. A Siberian Neanderthal's complexion would have contrasted starkly with one residing in the Middle East or Mediterranean regions. Ancient DNA reveals many Western Neanderthals had darker skin pigmentation and brown eyes, potentially an adaptation for metabolizing vitamin D from their meat-rich diets, rather than relying on limited sunlight exposure. However, other specimens from Spain and Italy carried a variant of the MC1R gene, causing reddish hair and lighter skin tones. So Neanderthal populations exhibited a wide array of hair, eye, and skin color diversity akin to modern humans. Yet below the surface level variations, their skeletal anatomy stood distinct. Stronger grips, broader chests, sloping skulls, and lack of a protruding chin. This unique Neanderthal physique reflected an ancient lineage marked by incredible resilience. To survive and thrive across unforgiving Ice Age environments, they developed innovative technologies from humble beginnings, 